So I did a video last year about migrating your OS and recently one of the most common comments on that video is that people are getting an error saying that their disk destination disk is too small. Now the quick and dirty answer to that error is that your destination disk is too small. When you are migrating your OS, what a lot of people don't realize is that you're migrating the entire C drive. You're not just migrating the Windows particular files. There are a lot of things in other folders that Windows is utilizing as an OS as you use it for a long time. Things like the users folder, program files, program data, all those kinds of things. And it's moving all of that stuff over. So today I thought I would help show all those people how you can go ahead and reduce the size of your C drive um, by looking at a few different locations, backing that kind of stuff up, maybe moving it off the disk onto an external hard drive or a USB so that you can go ahead and do your migration over to your new drive. Now, a majority of this bloat is gonna be in your users folder. Your users folder contains a lot of things, including your documents, your music, your pictures, your videos, your downloads folder, and all of these can start to get very, very large without a lot of people realizing, especially your downloads folder. Now, the other area that'll usually have a larger file size is the program files folder, which contains all of the data that all your programs use. My favorite way to go ahead and look at a particular drive and figure out what is taking up the most amount of space and what kind of things I can go ahead and move to another is Winderstat. Now, Winderstat is an incredible free program that allows you to analyze either particular drives or folders. And what it does is it breaks down what is taking up space in those uh, drives or folders. And it even gives you a visual representation of that. So if you see here, this is my Winderstat run for my C drive. And as you can see, as I mentioned, my users is the largest folder followed by program files. Now the next one up is Xbox games. I have a couple that defaulted onto the C drive. I don't typically install any games on the C drive, but this is my breakdown. So now if I go ahead and expand the users, you can see that Dimitri, me, is the largest user. And if we go ahead and expand that further, we can go ahead and see where all of this stuff is um, taking up space based on size. So my downloads folder is the largest right now, 88 gigs. This is going to be extremely common. A lot of people's downloads folder is going to constantly just get larger and larger and larger. And a lot of people never end ever end up cleaning that thing out. So it'll just continue to expand until it gets to gigantic amounts. I will typically go ahead and move all the things from my downloads folder onto an external hard drive and clean up some of the things that I don't need from that every once in a while. Um, so that's a very good place to start. Pictures, documents, and videos are really good things to kind of maybe start to look at culling or moving to an external drive as well. These aren't things that you really need to have on your C drive. Um, they're things that you can always have offsite and kind of move around and reference them and create shortcuts and stuff like that to make things easier. Now your app data is going to be where a lot of settings for programs are stored. So you're not going to want to get rid of that. Um, but it might be something where if you have app data folders um, inside your local and your roaming that are maybe for programs that you've uninstalled or you don't use anymore, those might be a good one to get rid of. Um, so take a look at that. And that applies again also to the program files. If you've uninstalled something and maybe it left a folder in here that is taking up a lot of space, it's a really good time to delete it and get rid of it. Now, I have a terrible habit of data hoarding. I hoard a ton of data and I have a, I'm just terrible at deleting stuff and I don't like deleting things and getting rid of them forever. So I have the problem where I'm always pushing them off onto other drives and my drives just get full and full and full and I just keep on moving data around. And it's not a good thing. I would highly suggest you use this to trim down some of your data, get rid of stuff that you don't need anymore, get rid of duplicates, stuff like that. Um, and go ahead and throw some of this stuff on an external hard drive so that you do have it in case you do need to get to it. Um, an, ex an external hard drive, a portable hard drive, even just another drive. So if you have multiple drives in your system, you can go ahead and move some of that stuff over so it's still very accessible to you. Um, and then once you get that down and you can get your C drive down to a size that is smaller than the destination drive that you're gonna be moving it to, 
So I noticed a lot of these people that are getting this issue are trying to install on like a 256 gig or a 500 gig from one or two terabyte size hard drives. So you can easily get rid of a lot of that data. Um, and then you can go ahead and just right click on properties. And once you go ahead and trim it down, you'll be able to see how much space is being used. And if you're able to get that below the size of the destination drive, then you're good to go and you should be able to do the migration. For example, here with my computer, if I slim down a majority of my users folder, we can get rid of almost 240 gigs or so of data extremely quickly just by moving uh, my downloads, pictures, documents, videos, and music over to an external hard drive. You can really trim that thing down. And now my uh, C drive is gonna be small enough to move to almost any drive I'd like. This also does bring to another topic where I do personally think 256 gigs is a little bit small for most people as an OS drive. If you're gonna be downloading things, if you're gonna to wanna to keep stuff into your local documents, videos, and pictures folders, 256 gigs is pretty small in this day and age. And honestly, 500 gig, even terabyte SSDs are extremely cheap and affordable. So if we use something like PC Part Picker, I've gone ahead and changed my capacity to a minimum of 500 gigs, um, the type being an SSD, and you can see that we still have 368 products that fall under this category. You can get a terabyte regular price for under 100 bucks, and that's for a you know premium drive. Um, you can get 500 gigs, usually for around 50 to 60 dollars. And honestly, most terabyte drives you can usually get from around 80 to 100 dollars, depending on which one you go for on current sales, stuff like that. I, I personally think there's no real excuse for going for a 256 gig unless you really already have one and you don't want to spend the money on something else. So unless you already had a 256 gig drive laying around and you wanted to use it for a boot drive, that's not a problem. But I would highly suggest against buying a 256 gig drive for a C drive and either waiting for a sale on a 500 gig one or just saving up a little bit more of that money, you know, 10 to $15 can get you from a 256 gig to a 500 gig and doubling that capacity for that money, I think is highly worth it. But I also hope that watching this video was worth it and I hope it helped you out. If it did, I'd really appreciate it if you like subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below. Big thanks to my patron sponsors, ThoughtSlime and Stepback, and thank you for watching this video. If you do wanna see any of my other computer tech help videos, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Saturday.